So now that we have DHCP installed, configured, and authorized, now we need to create DHCP server scopes. Now, before we do that, let's take a look at some of the commands that are available for managing DHCP. So, like we've done before, it's get command dash module DHCP server. And again, I'm going to pipe this to more because there's a whole bunch of them. So, here are all of our options, and we're not going to go through all of them. There are a few of them that I do want to point out. So the add DHCP server group, add DHCP server in DC, those are things that we looked at in our previous video about um, getting uh, DHCP configured. We have options to manage failover and lease and policies. Here's where we're going to add a DHCP server scope. Now, that will create a scope for us, and we're going to do that in a few minutes. But there are some issues with that. It will only do a few things. It won't do all of our options. So we're going to need something else to manage scope options. You'll also see here is where we're going to add DHCP server reservations. And then you'll also see our DHCP uh, v6 options as well. So moving along from there, get are all of our commands to retrieve information get the DHCP server leases, get failover information, get bindings, get information about the scope, get the scope statistics. Uh, all of these are things that we'll use when we're managing DHCP. So we're not going to go through all of them, but I want you to be aware that they're all there. But there is one other thing that I wanted to point out, and that is, and we'll look at this again in a second, we're going to do an add DHCP server v4 scope to create a scope to start handing out addresses. But there's another thing that we need to be aware of, and that is the DHCP server v4 option values. So the DHCP server scope, when we create that, is going to give us some options, but not all of our options like gateway, DNS server, things like that. So for that, we're going to use the set DHCP server v4 option values. All right, so let me show you how this is going to work. Let's do a get help on add DHCP server v4 scope. And I'm going to pipe that to more just in case. Okay, that was fairly straightforward. So we're going to add a DHCP server scope. We're going to set a starting IP address, an ending IP address, a subnet mask, and then a name for the scope. And those are things that we have to have. Everything else is pretty much going to be optional. We can set, specify the computer name to do it on, set a description, set a state, active or inactive. We're going to come back to that in a second. Set a super scope name, define boot clients, uh, active policies. So all these other things can be defined, but the four essential ones are starting address, ending address, the subnet mask, and the scope name. Now I know this says start range, end range. That's not actually a range. That's the start, the address range with this address, and the address range with this address. Now the other one I want to highlight for you right here is state. So the state defines whether this is going to be an active scope or an inactive scope. Now because I'm doing this on a device that is connected to my actual network, I want to make sure that that's inactive because I don't want it to start handing out addresses and disrupting, I mean, this is a test system. I don't want it to start handing out addresses and disrupting communication across my actual physical network. So I'm going to set it to inactive. It's actually a fairly common practice. Sometimes we will create a scope and get it all defined and we'll make it inactive with the idea that it's all set up so that we can just flip it to active whenever we need to. And that would be a set DHCP server v4 scope uh, option. We could change the state from active to uh, inactive. But when I create it, I'm going to go ahead and create it as inactive. Now, obviously, I need to have planned out beforehand what's my starting IP address, what's my ending IP address, what's my subnet mask. I need to have my gateway figured out. I need to have my DNS server figured out. All of these things I need to have figured out before I start configuring. So we'll make sure all of that is planned. And you'll notice there's no option to set the DNS server or the gateway. So that's not a possibility, but we have to create the scope before we can set the scope options. So this is going to be our command, add DHCP server v4 scope. And then because all of these are positional parameters, I'm not going to bother putting in the scope or the uh, 
parameter name, so I'm just going to define 10.1.1.100, and I want it to go through 10.1.1. Whoops, 10.1.1.199. My subnet mask for this scope is going to be 255.255.255.0, and my name is going to be sample scope. Now, I wanted the name to have a space in it just for clarity's sake, which means I had to put the single quote or double quote text qualifiers around it. So that way it's going to see it as one parameter and not two. And then I also want to set the state to inactive. All right, hit enter and that should create my scope. Cool. Didn't tell me anything though. So let's take a look and see if we can view it. We're going to get DHCP server v4 scope and this should show our scope for us. So our scope ID, our subnet mask, our name, our state, our start range, our end range, and our least duration is the Microsoft server default of eight days. Now, this scope ID is important because in other commandlets where we're having to specify scopes, we're going to identify it by that scope ID, not by this name here. So make sure you know what that scope ID is. And if you don't know what it is, just get DHCP server v4 scope. We'll grab for you right away all of them. Now, we need to set a DNS server and a gateway. Now, we can't do that using the add DHCP server v4 scope. Instead, we're going to use that by setting DHCP server v4 option values. And so I'm going to do a get help so you can see the help information for the set DHCP server v4 option value. Just in case. Okay. So here are my option values. Now there are two ways that I can deal with them. One is by using the number for the option. Um, the other is by actually setting the option name. So right here, this one is doing it based on option ID. This is not. This is doing it by setting name like DNS domain as an option. DNS server is an option, reserved IP, router. There is no default gateway. It's called the router option. It's the same thing. So we tend to think of it, if we're coming from the client side, we tend to look at look for a default gateway. On the server side, it's actually router, not default gateway. And then when server, now this is not all of the options. These are the primary ones. Now, notice right here, scope ID is optional. Now, here's the issue. If you don't set the scope ID, it will set the whatever you set, like your DNS server and your router, are going to be server options, which means all scopes are, that are active on the server are going to use the same server options. Now, if you've only got one scope, that's not a bad deal. But if you're doing multiple scopes and each one has to have its own uh, router or default gateway, then you're going to run into a problem. Now, sometimes people use the same DNS servers for their entire network. So they'll set the DNS server as a server option. But the router really needs to be a scope option. So the way we set that is by specifying the scope ID. Now, I'm going to go ahead and set these both options on the scope rather than on the server. So my command is going to be set DHCP server v4 option value and then I need to specify the scope ID so my scope ID is going to be 10.1.1.0 and that's what we found when we did that uh, get DHCP server v4 scope it gave us that scope ID we're going to specify the DNS server and I'm going to use 10.1.1.10. Now, this is important that you get it right because it will attempt to validate that that's a DNS server. And if it's not, it won't let you actually do it. Uh, and then we're going to set the router to 10.1.1.1. Now, that it actually doesn't verify. So I'm going to hit enter. And you saw a blue hopefully flash across here. Okay, that was uh, validating my DNS server as a process indicator. So I'm going to do get DHCP server v4 option value. 
and we're not going to see anything. Well, it's not because it didn't set it. It's that when I do the get DHCP server v4 option value, it's looking for server options. If I want to view them for a scope, I have to specify my scope ID of 10.1.1.0. And now when I do that, I am going to see here are my scope options. So I have a lease, a router, and a DNS server. Now you'll also see that these have specified numbers. It's option ID. Okay, that can become kind of important. Remember when we were looking up at our set DHCP server uh, v4 option value, we could set it using an option ID. All right, that's what it would use. So if we wanted to set a... DNS server would be option ID 6. Now, most of the time I don't do that because I don't remember those very well. However, if I want to change these, let's do a git help on remove DHCP v4 option value. Don't think it'll need more, but we'll just be on the safe side. <sighs> Let me try that with a dash in the name after this fails and that will work way better all right let's do remove dash dhcp v4 option value and i still don't have it right okay get help verb remove module dhcp server get command. Boy, I'm just doing lots of typos right now, aren't I? All right, so I want remove DHCP v4 scope, remove DHCP server v4 option value. So that's what I missed, DHCP server, I forgot to type server, v4 option value. Okay, so to remove the DHCP v4 option value, we have to use the option ID. And then again, we can specify scope if we want to remove it from a specific scope, or we can uh, choose to uh, remove it from the server if it's a server option value. So this is how this would work. It would be remove DHCP server v4 option value, and I want to remove value 6 from scope ID 10.1.1.0. Then let me get DHCP server v4 option value for scope ID 10.1.1.0. And you're going to see that my option 6 is gone. Now I'm going to go ahead and reset it real quick. And I'm going to typo something on purpose. So I'm going to set DHCP server v4 option value on scope ID 10.1.1.0. I'm going to set my DNS server to 10.1.1. I'm going to do 5. Now, 10 is my actual server. So what happens when we try to do this is it will attempt to uh, verify that DNS server. And that's what it's doing right now. It's trying to validate it. It can't. It comes back and says, ah, that's not going to work. 10.1.1.5 is not a valid DNS server. Now you can override that, but that just kind of is a check there because of how much Microsoft Networking relies on DNS. It's just a check to make sure that you actually get the right one. So I'm going to reset it back to the right one. That time it tested immediately. So let me do my git DHCP v4 option value and everything is back. Okay, we have created a DHCP v4 scope. We have verified it using the get DHCP server v4 scope. We have set option values, we've removed option values, and we've verified option values. All right, at this point, you should have enough to be able to configure DHCP and get a DHCP scope up and running uh, using just PowerShell commands.